I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. This from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take some else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen, fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. What's good, y'all? Trying to hear the most woke, no joke, and I'm back at again with a brand new video. And today, I have a question for you. Just one question. Do you know what a heartbreak feels like? Do you know what it feels like? to get dropped off by your family to a training camp. You're thinking you're gonna have a good year. You're thinking to yourself, okay, this is the year. It's looking pretty tough. They a lot of competition out here, but I can maybe, just maybe, show enough to get coach to believe in me. And I can stay on this 90-man roster just long enough to get to the preseason and prove to coach that I deserve to be on the 53-man roster. And even if it's not all that, at least I can have some game film on me from preseason and I can get one of these other 31 teams to give me a look and say, hey, you know what? That guy right there, we can use him on our team. And then three hours later, the team cuts you. The news just came down yesterday that the Panthers cut three players and signed three players the day before training camp actually opened up. Of the three players cut, running back Elijah Hood, who was kind of a fan favorite because he came up in the area. There was also offensive and defensive D lineman Ian Silverman and Elijah Qualls. Look. Those two, I don't really know too much about those guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to boost it. I don't really know all that much. Those are definitely, definitely death pieces, camp bodies, who it's sad to say about like people. These are actual people, but they were kind of like, they had no shot at making the 53-man roster. But Elijah Hood, who I also believe didn't have much of a shot at making the roster either, just because the running back class, our, our running back core this year is, it's, it's really tight. It's going to be a really, really tight race. And he was definitely on the outside looking in. I think Cameron Artis Payne had a better shot. And Cameron Artis Payne, to me, does not have a very good shot to make this team. Unless he has some kind of Brent Burson deal where he just makes the team every single year, no matter what. Because I don't know. I don't know how Brent was doing it. But I, I just don't see him making the team either. But Elijah Hood got dropped off to Spartanburg, South Carolina to go to training camp. His family's all there. They say, okay, Elijah, have a good camp. 2019 is your year, son. Go make it happen. Three hours later... Everyone's getting their rooms. Everyone's getting roll call. Everyone's getting their golf carts and everything. And coach says, hey, Elijah, come here. Did your family get far? Did you unzip your duffel bag just yet? Because it ain't happening. We tend to think about football and the team and that kind of stuff as a family, as our guys and whatnot. But you got to remember, it's a cold, hard business. And that was cold blooded. That is, hey, that's, that's a sharp move right there. I ain't going to lie to you. The man just got dropped off. We couldn't send a text message. We couldn't, we couldn't send him a little, a DM real quick. Three hours earlier. Was this a decision that was made on the spot? Like, okay, he's here. You know what? Look at the list. Oh, wait. He's on the team still. Let's just go ahead and, uh, yeah, sorry, Ryan. I didn't know on the team still. Like, what kind of decision making was that to the point where you didn't know you were going to cut the man until after he arrived? You could have saved the man a little bit of gas. Hey, you could have saved him a little bit of a tank of gas on just giving him a quick text saying, hey, man. Spartanburg might not be where you want to be right now. It, it, it's not in the cards this year. It is what it is. He ended up getting waived. And I think Jordan Rodriguez said there was something to do with a, a physical that he might not have passed. I think I read that on a tweet. Don't quote me on that. I actually don't have the tweet in front of me right now. But I I don't believe that. I don't think it was because of a, a physical. I just don't think that Elijah Hood was going to make the team anyway. His preseason numbers last year weren't all that great. He had 11 yards rushing on nine attempts. I think that was like 1.1 or 1.2 yards per carry. Not a lot of attempts, but you got to do more than 11 yards. I, it just wasn't all that great. So it, it's understandable. But for every door that's closed, a window is open because the Panthers did sign three other players. They signed a guard named Norman Price. They signed a defensive lineman named Bijan Jackson. And they also signed a receiver named Jaden Mickens. Now, I don't know much about Norman Price. I'm not going to sit here and try to evaluate an old lineman all that much here. So sorry about that. But B. John Jackson is a guy who did pretty well, I think, in, in college. I, nothing really all that impressive. He spent all four years in Arkansas. Total of 47 tackles, three and a half sacks. And all those sacks came in his final two years at school. So he improved Every year he was there, it's not really much to talk about with him. He's probably going to be a camp body kind of guy, so it is what it is there. The real guy to talk about here is Jaden Mickens. Jaden Mickens is a guy who is probably going to be slotted to really compete with Rashad Ross, who we got from the AAF for that kick returner spot. Jaden Mickens and Rashad Ross do offer a pretty interesting comparison here. Now, Jaden Mickens, while he was in college, 
was every bit of a receiver. His first year in 2012, he didn't really have that many stats, but his next three years, he had 700 yards receiving, 600 yards receiving, and then 700 yards receiving, a total of 12 touchdowns. But the thing about that is he probably won't really crack the roster as an actual receiver. He's going to make his bread and butter off of kick and punt returns. And that's where it gets a little strange because the only time he returned kicks was in 2012, his freshman year. He returned 19 for a total of 400 yards. That's 21.5 on average. And then in 2013, 14, and 15, he didn't return a single kick. And in 2014, he returned three punts for a total of 14 yards, which really means nothing at all. So I'm kind of confused as to what that is because Rashad Ross, when he was in college, his final two years at Arizona State, he wasn't really all that big in the offense. 250 yards to the air his junior year, 600 yards to the air his senior year. In those two years, he had 13 and 15 returns for a total of 800 yards returning kicks. And he also returned three punts his uh, junior year for a total of 39 yards. Not really all that impressive, but at the very least, he did have some actual concrete experience with kick and punt returning in college. Then he got to the pros, and in 2014 through 2016, he had a total of 34 kick returns, total of 812 yards, one touchdown on it, a long of 101. So he returned one to the full field. And when you compare Rashad Ross's pro stats to Jaden Mickens' pro stats, there's not really all that much of a, of a difference. I mean, two years for Jaden Mickens, 39 punt returns for 346 yards. He had a long of 72, which got returned for a touchdown in 2017. He actually was the AFC Special Teams Player of the Week that week. He didn't really do very much in the kick return game in the past two years. Total of eight kick returns for 170 yards. So it's not really looking like either one of these guys are going to be like home run hitters. And there's not really that much of a difference. I would probably lean toward Rashad Ross maybe being a little bit better. Also because he was the best player in the whole AAF league. What was the AAF called? Uh, uh, American Alliance Football? I actually don't remember what the, the acronym is anymore. But he was the best player in the whole league. And he was one of the first free agent signings we had this offseason. Don't forget that. He was one of the first guys we signed this offseason. The biggest difference between Rashad Ross and Jaden Mickens, though, is that Rashad Ross graduated from college in 2012. And 2012 was Jaden Mickens' freshman year in college. So they're about four years apart. And I guess youth does play a pretty big role. I don't see either one of these guys getting like very, very long-term deals. But I can see youth playing a role in which of these guys gets that spot on the team. I definitely don't see both these guys making the roster. So it's going to be a very, very interesting position battle here to see which of these guys actually makes the roster as a kick returner, punt returner. And even though Torrey Smith is going to be starting the year on the pup list, which I will do a video on that, the three guys who are starting the year on the pup list, uh, I don't really think either one of these guys is going to make the team as a receiver. They're going to be basically a specialist. These are going to be guys you really only see after we make a third down stop or after the opponent actually scores on us. I mean, there's also halftime and beginning of games, but I don't see these guys really get on the field very often on offensive snaps. That's all I got for you though, man. This is going to be a really, really good position battle between Rashad Ross and J.D. Mickens. The other two guys we signed are probably going to be camp bodies, but keep an eye out for which of these guys fills that Demir Burr role, a guy who's, you know, maybe going to do a few things for us. Basically making sure that DJ Moore, Dante Jackson, uh, Christian McCaffrey don't have to return kicks and don't have to risk injury doing all that. That's all I got for you today, though. What are your thoughts on these three signings, the three guys who got cut? Especially, I know a lot of you guys really, really, really did like Elijah Hood. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.